What's up, everyone? We're back with more Great Ace Attorney. And I guess now we shall start off by presenting stuff to Gregson. What do we got? Blood samples, maybe? Inspector Gregson, could you give me your opinion about this, do you think? We don't tend to share, Sunshine, not with the general public. Ugh. In that case, Gregsy, how about some herbal tea? Glug. Delicioso. I just realized, does he have a freaking notebook in his hat? Why did it take me this long to realize that? What the hell? I think we already got that conversation, by the way, so I didn't speak up. Uh, uh... Oh, yeah, this. I'm Inspector. What do you make of this? Oh, what have we here, then? A redemption ticket for an article deposited here, is it? Looks like someone ran out of, ran out of office stationery and wrote the ticket on whatever paper it was to hand. Yes, this is the ticket from, from a gilded overcoat. The one that that little diver turned up with yesterday. Oh, actually, no, it's not. Really? Think you know better than me, do ya? No, I, I didn't mean to, um... Reno's right, Gregsy, it isn't the same ticket. Of course it isn't, of course it isn't. I never doubted you, your ladyship. So, what's all this about then? If I might be so bold as to ask. This is... A, this is a second ticket. A second one? It seems that Mr. McGilded, in fact, had another article in storage here at Windebanks. Is that right? I think we need to discuss this further with the inspector, Mr. Narahoto. Oh, good. Because he's ever so easy to talk to. Second redemption ticket. This ticket was in one of the pockets of Mr. McGilded's overcoat. Er... Y you mean to tell me? Yes, there is more than just the music box disc, it seems. Oh. Uh, I should have insisted on the lads taking it b back to the yard and examining it properly. Well, according to the details on this ticket, Mr. McGilded deposited another article here with Mr. Windbank. Yes, I can see it written here. A small box, was it? Do you have any idea where it is, Greg C? Any idea at all? It's another article belonging to Mr. McGilded. It could be an important clue. Well, um, yes, um, I suppose it could be. Please stop looking at me with those big turquoise eyes all full of hope and expectation. It's too much pressure. If I lose me marbles, I will- I'll lose my marbles, I will. I'll go barking. This is no time for dog impressions, Inspector. Chomp, chomp, chomp. That's enough sauce from you, Sunshine. There is one thing that springs to mind. According to this ticket, the redemption deadline's already passed, hasn't it? Oh yes, of course. Articles are only held for two months. So the small box will no longer be in here, then? That's right. It's been forfeited. Well, I mean, you don't know that. It could still just not have been bought means it could be on the shelves in the front of the shop where they forfeited items they're offered for sale. Yes, the shelves in the front. We must search them at once. We're wasting our time. Oh? There are dozens of little boxes out there. Hundreds, even. We can't possibly know which one might have been McGilded's. That information's not written in the ledger. Ugh. Well, I think we should at least have a look, just in case. Of course, your ladyship, of course. Very sensible of you, I'm sure. This is getting old. Huh. Guess we're looking. Whoa. Ah! I nearly jumped out of my skin there. How can Mr. Windbank set such a wicked trap? Even when dead, he's a pain in my ass. I... I doubt he set it out to scare anyone. Is that really the time? 
I think perhaps we should pay Gina another visit soon. Oh? Her trial is tomorrow. You must establish whether or not you will be defending her. I think we should ask her one more time. She may have changed her mind. Uh, what about... What about looking for the box? Don't you remember, Rino? We told her she could ri rip up the representation papers if she didn't want you to be her lawyer. Really? Did I say that? Yes, you did. Deadline for submitting the paperwork is fast approaching. In that case, we'd better hurry back to the prison and talk to Gina again. Okay. Oh, we can, we can do this. Yes, this is where all the items that have been forfeited for the original owners are offered for sale. That's right, they've all got little price labels on them. But there's so many. What if the small box this ticket was for is still on the shelf somewhere? The box that McGilda deposited here just over two months ago. Even if it were, finding its promises to be finding it promises to be very troublesome indeed. There are so many boxes, it could be any one of them. Mr. Strom said the pawnbroker was the safest place to store anything. More secure than a bank's vault. So perhaps a small box of Mr. McGilded contains something of, of very great value. But if that's the case, he'd probably have kept it locked. So that we need to find every box with a lock and break them all open. Hiya! Ow. Oh. That sort of misconduct would get you arrested. I won't let that happen. Uh, this takes me back. It's been some time since Asado san last threw me. My man's back is broken yet again. Uh, anything else? Okay, this is gonna take forever. I'm just gonna go willy nilly. I doubt there'd be anything too important. Alright. Oh, let's head back to the prison. Gina. Five forty one pre preem. Preem. Local prison cell thirteen. Here we are. Ah, uh, Gina, good. You're back. Ah! <laughs> the police must have finished questioning her then. Oh, how was it, Guinea? Was it awful? Eh, uh, oh, didn't bother me. Thank you for the papers you signed before. It meant we were able to investigate at Winterbanks. Oh, right. Don't you want to know how we got on? We've been ever so busy. What's the point in asking? Won't change what everyone's saying. That all did it. That's not... Gina, we came to ask for your final decision. Eh, what decision? About tomorrow's trial. Will you let me defend you or not? Shy girl. I must submit the paperwork now if you'd like Mr. Narahodo to represent you. Right. I see. She's really lost her fight all of a sudden. But I know what it, what that feels like. The worry is just so hard to bear. Hope we've been covered. Whoa! Oh, all right then, blimey. Give it a rest with them eyes, Iris. So come on then, fill us in. Who done it? Fortunately, we don't know that yet. You don't say. We don't know yet, Gina. But Mr. Narhodo and all of us know that you are innocent of this crime. While we haven't yet managed to work out who the real culprit is... There are a number of interesting facts that have managed to we have managed to establish. Oh yeah, like what? Well, for example, the reason for you being there in the first place. I think I now know why you broke into Winterbanks that night. 
Yeah. I think it's pretty obvious. And it looks like I'm gonna have to take some evidence that clearly reveals the reason. Thrust it in Gina's face. Or I can present it to her calmly, I suppose. Nah, it's, it's more fun to thrust. Wait. Wait, no. Uh. We already have the representation papers and other documents you need. All we have to do is hand them to the court clerk. That is, if you'll allow me to represent you in court tomorrow. Nah, don't bother. Kenny. Rip them up and chuck them, would ya? Them representation papers or whatever they're called. This cell ain't, f ain't fancy enough to have a bin. So what will you do in court tomorrow? I'll be fine on my own. I don't think you will be. Look, it don't matter. What's gonna happen is gonna happen. This is one stubborn pickpocket. Alright. Fine. Get out of here. We found this in Mr. Winterbank's storeroom. The manuscript of Iris' latest story. Ah! Oh, right. Well, that's good then. Curiously, the storeroom at Windowbank showed no sign of being ransacked for items of value or the like, with one exception. The box file that housed this manuscript. It was you, wasn't it, Gina, who broke open the box containing this manuscript last night. Eh? You were determined to find out whether or not the Hound of the Baskervilles was really there. That's the real reason you broke into the storm last night, isn't it? Ah! It's freaking hat in the face. Why don't you tell us what happened? Please. We don't even know why she was asleep. Like, she must have. She was unconscious, but why? She must know something. Alright, yeah. This Baskerville story. It's the latest Shome adventure, right? But it ain't been printed yet. So I figured it's got to be worth a few fair pieces of silver, you right? Oh yes, at least five five thousand pounds. What? So you intended to sell Iris's manuscript, did you? No, Ginny, how could you? What? Oh, wait, no, ain't on. Of course I wasn't gonna sell it. All I wanted to do was find out if the manuscript or whatever you call it was really there or not. That's the only reason I was in the place. For Iris' sake. Isn't that right? Hold up. Sorry, I got a call there. Ah! We knew why you'd done it from the start, Gina. Of course we did. But... I knew you wouldn't do anything mean like that, Guinea. I just knew it. Well, um, uh... When I saw the manuscript in the store, it reminded me of what you said the night before. Flashback again. I'm a lot worse than that, believe me. Bare face liars, a lot of them, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, we already got this. I do wonder why why Sholmes wanted her to not post the story. Like, that one must have been very interesting in particular. And I just keep getting interrupted today. But yeah, I wonder, Sholmes must have had a good reason for, for not wanting that that particular story to get published. I just wonder as to why. Maybe it's like a very personal one for him? Or maybe, or maybe the people that, some people that were involved in that story specifically asked not to, not to be featured or something, I don't know. Oh, Guinea, that was so sweet of you. All right, all right. I'll tell you why I did it. Just stop looking at me like that, Iris. All right, finally getting somewhere. Reason for breaking in. It wasn't because of Iris, that's not why I did it. I just wanted to know the truth, that's all. I wanted to know if Mr. Sholmes is being honest. If you'd really deposited the manuscript at Windebanks. It's so like I told you the night before. I never had a father. But Iris' lie ain't like mine. She's got a dad, only she can't see him. And I reckon that's gotta be harder. 
That's why she writes it as stories. They're about her dad, really. That's what it sounded like to me, anyway. That's not when I was listening to what you were saying. Stories about daddy? Oh. You mean they're not the adventures of a great detective? So much as the adventures of a great detective and his trusty partner. Well, that's how I see it, yeah. Wow. You're so thoughtful and so kind, Guinea. Yes, and we never and we never thought any differently, did we? Look, give it a rest, will ya? Well that's new. I ate all this chummy nonsense, dear dear. I ate it. I don't trust no one, right? That's how I, that's how I work. Cause if you don't trust no one, no one can let you down. So leave me alone. Go on, scupper. And she really is stubborn. I hadn't noticed until now, but it's unmistakable. Right there on both sli sleeves of that overcoat. Are some very suspicious reds. Those are red? She has blood? Whoa, why are you looking at me like that? I think I might be worth presenting some of our other findings in that area to Gina now. Oh, shoot. There's blood on the overcoat? Those stains on the sleeves of your new coat, Gina. They're blood, aren't they? Not that I know whose blood yet. What? Blood, Mr. Narado? You don't appear to have any obvious wounds yourself, though. So could it be blood that spattered from Mr. Winterbank when he was shot last night? It's not beat around the bush, dear. This trusty friend of mine will get results much faster than anything else. Shoot her. Shoot her. Shoot her! Take the shot. Taking the shot. Take the shot. Took the shot. Oh. Pur purple? <gasps> purple! Thrice fired, th thrice fired Mason! It's blood from... It's blood from the trial two months ago. But McGilded was wearing it. Oh, shit. Oh. Oh, my. What the? Oh, my gosh. Forget the sleeves. The whole coat is covered in... The whole coat is covered in blood. Of course. The black color of the fabric is masking the stains. That's why we haven't seen them until now. Oh my god. And the blood has reacted with the chemical to turn a purple color, which matches one of the samples we've already collected perfectly. Yes, now let's see, who has the purple blood? Aha, yes, it was the brickmaker, Mr. Mason, with the victim of the murder case two months ago. Oh shit. I knew it. What you all want about? The victim, what do you mean? Oh man, things are getting... Things are getting complex. It's a rather uncomfortable situation, Mr. Norhoto, but I think this makes things quite clear. It means the Omnibus case is finally solved. The truth about who really murdered the brick brickmaker, Mr. Mason, is revealed. Oh, would someone explain what's going on? Stop telling half a story. Yeah, we know that it was McGill that committed the murder now. His overcoat having all that blood on it, that is a bi the biggest tell you can make. Oh man. You can see now that the victim's blood is all over Mr. McGill's overcoat. But in the trial two months ago, the defendant said this in his testimony. Got a voice this again. Now I ask you, is what good hearted soul wouldn't rush to help a fellow bleeding from his stomach? I wasn't about to start worrying about me gloves now, was I? I reach out to give the man a hand. Give him a bit more than a hand by looks of things. But if you look at this overcoat now, it's clear. 
These stains couldn't have arisen from, from a gilded trying to pull the victim to his feet. No, if that was what really happened, the blood wouldn't have splashed all over the front of the coat. The only explanation for this pattern of blood is that it splattered over Mr. McGilded's coat when he stabbed the victim in the stomach. Damn, that's a big blood stain from stabbing someone. I've tried to run from the truth for long enough, but there's no escaping it now. Mr. McGilded was the murderer. The true culprit in that case, Mr. Mason's killer, was Magnus McGilded. So he was a kid. He, I mean, we kind of knew it from a for a while, but that just proves it without a shadow of a doubt. Mr. Narahoto. That horrible case is solved at last. And I... I helped the man walk free from the trial. I used all that twisted testimony and all that sham evidence to prove his innocence! How could I have let that happen? Bruno, did you believe him, though? Did you believe Mr. McGilded was innocent? I believed. Or rather, I think I was trying to believe. I wanted to. Because believing in those you represent in court is a defense lawyer's greatest weapon. A weapon? That's a classic phrase there. Your descendants carry on that phrase. A lawyer's weapon. Before he came to Great Britain, a great friend of mine taught me a valuable lesson. You mean Kazuma-sama. Listen, Ryunosuke. We lawyers are only human. We can't know for sure what, it, what is the truth and what is a lie. Which is why we must resort to our primary weapon. Trust. An unwavering belief in our clients. That's all we really have. Unwavering belief? Only when we truly believe what our clients tell us. Can we fight with everything we have for their cause? In any battle, there can be no victory without faith. So I believe you, unwaveringly. Miss you, Kazuma. You're such a good dude. <laughs> What's funny, Gina? Well, it sounds like, it sounds like in this empire, Japan, you come from. Everyone must be soft. Well, come on, look at the mess that it's got you into, believing in that Bob Trotter. Yes, I inadvertently helps a murderer walk free. Hey, at least you didn't walk free for long. Well, at least you've learned your lesson now, eh? We, st we haven't found the total truth of that case, because we, need to fig we still need to figure out how the hell the omnibus went up in flames. That's obviously going to come back at some point as well. Believing in people is never worth it. Someone always stabs you in the back in the end. As soon as you let your guard down, you've had it. Take a leaf out of my book. Believe no one, good it, get up by no one. Gina, may I ask you something? What? I'd just like to make absolute, sh absolutely sure. What would you like us to do with these representation papers for tomorrow's trial? How many times do I have to say I rip them up and chuck them away? Are you really sure that's what you want? I'll bet that's what- I'll bet that's what you- what you want and all now. Mr. I'm a believer lawyer over there. Don't forget it was me in that trial two months ago. I led everyone up up the garden path, didn't I? And you're telling me you can believe in me after that? Not likely. Well, Mr. Narahoto. Lawyer's primary weapon is an unwavering belief in his clients. Ultimately, it comes down to whether or not I feel I can trust Gina after everything that's happened. I don't know, she's been very forth with since since the start of this case. You know, let me say it again. Please allow me to represent you in tomorrow's trial. Are you half-baked? 
Not at all. You've not once admitted to committing the crime, have you? That's true. She hasn't said it outright. What's more, I believe that you're telling me the truth. Nice. Seriously, um, Mr. Uh, Naruto. Naruto. Didn't you hear all of what I said before? I'm a born liar. Fibs just trip off my tongue. And I'm a diver, don't forget. I pulled the wool over your eyes two months ago and got you into all sorts of trouble. Why would you ever trust me now? I just don't get it. Gina. I do understand why you choose not to put your trust in others. But I assure you, there is more to this life than you yet realize. What you mean? The world we live in. It's full of people you would do very well to trust. People who won't ever let you down. Man, that's a very soft expression that Susato has. Eh. <laughs> it's true that I'm just a student of law, and I'm certainly lacking in courtroom experience. But I can promise you this. Whatever happens, and until my very last breath, I am completely on your side. What do you expect me to say to that? Aw. Freaking wiping the tears away. Good girl. Good girl. She's, a, she's, a, she's a good she's a good lass. Then it's decided. I will take these papers now and carry out the necessary preparations for tomorrow's trial. It'd be a shame to throw them away now after it's been penned up with your name so beautifully. Do what you like. You eat some lot of... Uh, I don't know what you are, I don't get you. Oh. oh man. Gina's taking herself off of... Gina's taking herself off to the back of her cell. She never admitted it, but I hope she's feeling relieved. It turned out alright in the end, I think. Oh. Whoever's hiding there, show yourself at once. Eavesdropping is the height of cowardice. Oh, we're still here. Miss Susato? Somebody's there in the shadows. I can sense it. Someone who, somebody who wasn't there before. Damn. What? I was about to say that Susato's leaving tomorrow and she ended on a strong note with all her help with getting Gina to accept us as her lawyer. And now she's even going further beyond with whatever this is. Who? Blimey, you're sharp, eh? Who? Oh, Gregson. I suppose you were using one of those mystic Japanese arts. Like the art of stealth I've heard so much about. If anyone was being stealthy, it was you, Inspector. Gregson! Oh dear me, I am most terribly sorry, your ladyship. I didn't mean to startle you. How long have you been listening in on a conversation? Good grief, listening in? No, no, no. I just got word that there were some visitors who were refusing to leave even though it was after hours. I assure you, your ladyship, I only just arrived. This very minute, not a moment earlier. That's all it is. Nothing untoward, nothing at all. After hours? It's that late already. So then, I'll humbly excuse myself now, your ladyship. Ta-ta, toodaloo, cheerio, all the best. Bye, 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 and bye. It's a lot of farewells, and not one of them appropriate for her ladyship. Oh, but I wanted to have a chat. I'm, I'm terribly sorry, but time is pressing at the moment. Oh, I see. That's a shame. If I don't get this emergency at the Supreme Court dealt with Sharpish, Lord Strongheart will... well... Emergency? Lord Strongheart? N nothing, forget I said anything. Anyway, I'm off. I'll wait, Greg C, if you have to. But let's chat soon. Delighted, charmed, can't wait, if you please, my pleasure. And you're starting to sound like Sosaki. 
That's a lot of pleasantries. Not one of them sounded sincere. <laughs> Briggs is so fun. He says such silly things. He's such a silly Billy. Certainly entertaining to see an inspector of the police spawn into a ten-year-old girl. But anyway, I wonder what this emergency is at the Supreme Court. Huh. I must attend the, co the court clerk's office now before it closes. Yes, of course. Thank you, Mrs. Otto. Kindly escort Hi Iris home now, Mr. Naruhodo. I shall meet you there later. Yeah, it's probably gonna be like a last conversation with her before she heads abroad. And so our investigation came to an end. Sado-san went to file the necessary papers for my defense in Gina the following day. And then it hit me. I no longer suppress the wretched feeling that had been gnawing away at my insides. Tomorrow, Sado-san would be leaving. Leaving Britain, making her way back to Japan. Here we are. April 16th, 11.13pm. Arahoto's Legal Consultancy. Naruhodo-san, it's been a very trying day, hasn't it? I do hope you're not too exhausted. What about you, Sasato-san? Today has been even more trying for you, I'm sure. Mr. Sholmes is shot before our eyes, Gina was arrested. All on the back of the news that her father has fallen ill and that she must return to Japan at once. Not to mention all the help she gave us. I hope your father recover recovers soon. Thank you for your kind words. Poor girl. I wonder why it is that so many thoughts rage in my head like a storm, and yet I seem unable to find the words to express any of them. I know exactly what you mean. Anyway, I have one final task to complete as your judicial assistant. When, once that is done, I shall make preparations for my departure tomorrow. One final task? Let me examine things first. What's the matter with me? Why am I examining things at a time like this? Oh. I thought we'd get some, like, heartfelt convert. Like, some bittersweet type of stuff from examining things. It's just two months since we arrived in London, but we've managed to establish this office. It was, final, it was finally feeling as though we were settling in. I would be lying if I said I felt no regret. I'm so sorry, Sasato-san. It's just so sudden. I really don't know what to think. I've had no time to gather my thoughts. I know we've only been here for a short a short time, but in my limited experience of the courtroom, I feel I have learned something. And what would that be? It seems to me there are many facets to people's personalities. Facets? And like a jewel, the light plays off them in complex patterns, illuminating their actions and their motives. But we see only but we see only see a small number of the total facets. What is illuminated is only part of the whole story. Huh. What lies in the shadows? What do those facets we cannot see look like? Perhaps there are some parts that'll, that we'll never lay eyes on for as long as we live. That's so true. Sometimes it feels though I'm blind to so much. But I keep hoping that one day it will all become clear. That all the facets will be illuminated. And I'll finally understand how everything fits together. Naruhodo san. I suppose what matters is that we keep our eyes open, we keep moving forward, even if the way sometimes seems dark. It's amazing to think it's just been two months. We've grown so much. Aw, oh, that's it. Sorry? I've what? Oh no, it was nothing. Unimportant. Nothing's unimportant right now. Do 
You know what time you will leave London in the morning? Yes, I picked up my ticket earlier. I shall be leaving here at 4 a.m. I see. Well, I'll escort you to the station. Absolutely not. Sorry? I'm sure you realize why I couldn't possibly let you do that. You have a very important day ahead of you tomorrow. Gina's trial. Yes, I know, but... Every word you utter will have the potential to determine Gina's fate. You must get as much rest as possible. Even though, like me, I'm sure you will find it hard to sleep. But please, for me, do try. This is final task. Um, you mentioned one final task a moment ago. What did you mean? Oh my, I nearly forgot. Please, I want you to have this. What is that? It's a huge bundle of documents. Oh, is that the thing she always carries in her sleeve? It's my notes, from the case two months ago. The murder that was committed on the omnibus. From a gilded case. It seems to me that this case of Mr. Windebank's murder, of which Gina is accused, is very much tied up with that omnibus case, in ways that are not yet completely apparent. So I took the liberty of con consolidating my writings about the case for you. Everything else she's had to think about. Sotosan still managed to do this. And all neatly laid, up, laid out for me in her beautiful handwriting. It was my pleasure. I can only hope that it will bolster your case tomorrow for Gina. Thank you so much, Sotosan. I will do my best to use it wisely. You really are the best judicial assistant in the world. Well, that's extremely flattering. But I'm sorry to say... That I've been a complete failure. Sorry, I didn't quite catch what you said there. Oh, ignore me, I was just mumbling to myself. Uh, notes collated by Mr. Sato about the McGilded case that we worked on two months ago. Okay. Well, it's getting rather late. I think you should go to bed now, Naruhoto-san. I must finish packing up my things in my room. Susato-san, I... I wish you the very best of luck tomorrow. Oyasumi. Wait, there's someone I need to say. Hiya! Wow. What was that? A secret technique of mine. The Susato shutdown. Shutdown? Please, I implore you. We have to voice our goodbyes. I won't be able to hold back my tears. Poor girl. Poor dude as well. Sato san. Oh man. Truly has been a trying day. On our feet for hours, getting Gina to open up to us, and learning the truth about that nemesis of a case. Physically and mentally, I was exhausted. And yet the idea of sleep seemed impossible. But I forced myself to close my eyes. And as a, ca and as a cacophony of scenes of our, of our lives here in London played through my mind, eventually, my fatigue triumphed. And I fell into a deep sleep. Onwards to the trial. April. Ah.
Uh, I thought we were going to be going straight to the trial. Okay, I was expecting to end the episode there. Well, it said the, it said the hospital. Yes, I quite understand. That is a great weight off my mind. Oh. Holmes. Rest assured, I shall put everything in place exactly as we have discussed. Thank you so much. It has been an honor and a pleasure to be acquainted with you, Mr. Sholmes. On the contrary, the pleasure has been mine. I bid you farewell, and Godspeed. Mrs. Sutter. My dear madam. To be continued. Wow. What a case, and we aren't even at the trial yet. Oh man. Good lordy. Let's save. Okay. Next time on Great Ace Attorney, we take on the trial to save Gina. Without Susato at our side, but hey, we'll pull through. Adios, ciao, and bye-bye. Signing off until next time. Ja, matane.